Hey, how you doing? Tim Warner here welcoming you to a brief tutorial on getting familiar with Azure Resource Graph. What is Azure Resource Graph and why should you care? Well, Resource Graph in Azure is a way to discover and report on your Azure resources. What you're doing is interacting directly with the Azure Resource Manager, or ARM, Application Programming Interface, or API. This resource graph is actually what powers the portal search bar as well as the all resources view. You might think, well, Tim, what's the difference between using, say, the all resources view? I mean, why do you care about what's happening under the hood? Well, because number one, you don't have to install any agent or enable diagnostics. This is something that you can query directly. And number two, we can take advantage of the Custo query language or KQL. You might be familiar with KQL through Azure Monitor Log Search and Azure Data Explorer. Well, the resource graph relies upon that same query language, so this gives you that power and flexibility under the hood. Now, you might be familiar in the Azure portal with the Resource Explorer, what you can see here. This is a way for you to browse through either the Azure Resource Manager provider namespace or directly through your subscriptions, and you can drill down and ultimately get to an individual resource, and you can see the underlying JSON that represents that resource. That's cool, this directly within the portal. There's also the Azure Resource Explorer application. That's at resources.azure.com. And what's cool about this is that you can actually enable read write view and execute REST API operations, your HTTP operations, post, delete, get, and put directly from within this web interface. It's pretty cool, but also very powerful. <laughs> okay, so now let's come back to the portal and let's take a look at resource graph. You do a search, like I said, this experience, which is very fast indeed, comes to you by virtue of the Azure Resource Graph. And in the Azure Resource Graph documentation, Microsoft tells you that as you deploy and modify your resources, those changes get piped in. So Resource Graph gets notified of those changes. So you'll find, again, without having to install or manage any solutions or agents, you can query your resources using this KQL language. Now notice we've got nodes here for Resource Graph Explorer and then a separate one for Resource Graph Queries. Let's go to Resource Graph Explorer. If you've used KQL with the Azure Monitor Log Search capability, also sometimes called Azure Log Analytics, then you're familiar with this general workflow. It's different, though, in Graph Explorer because the schema over on the left, these virtual tables, we've got alert management resources, which allows you to drill into alert-related data, resource containers that allows you to drill into your subscriptions and resource groups, resources, which is where we're going to focus our queries today. That's a humongous list of virtual tables that correspond to all of your different resource providers, whether you're actually using them or not. They're all in that list. And then we have security-related metadata there under security resources, okay? So as you see, as I'm clicking, it's interactively building out my query. This is a multi-query interface, so as you click New Query, you can bring them out into separate tabs. Note the Save and Save As. You'll, I'll show you that in just a second, how you can save your work and share your queries with your colleagues. Notice also down below we have tabular results as well as chart or graphical results. That's something that, again, comes to us from Azure Data Explorer under the hood. Now, one thing I've noticed on my system, and I'm not sure what the issue is, if there even is one, is that you notice I'm typing, I'm not getting IntelliSense code completion like you do within Azure Log Analytics. You may find that it does work on your system. I'm not sure which variable is at play in my case, whether it's the browser or what it is, but I'm hand typing these. I'm also going to be pasting sample queries from the documentation. I'll end this brief tutorial by giving you some links that you can use to get started with building your own queries with Azure Resource Graph. But like I said, we're going to work within the resources virtual table. Let me come back and select that. We'll use the pipe and the line return to separate clauses. We've got a series of keywords that perform different operations. I'm just going to do a summarize count and then run query. This is going to look through and give us a count of all resources in my subscription. Notice that there's a uh, C details over here, depending on what you're projecting or what columns or properties you're pulling from those virtual tables. It'll depend on what you get back. Also, RBAC is at play here. 
the user as he or she works with Resource Graph, the results are only going to reflect what you have access to in your subscriptions. All right, so you'll want to keep that in mind. Let's take a look at resources sorted by name. I'm just going to paste this query in. Project in KQL is similar to select in structured query language. And you notice that order by, even with ASC or DESC for ascending and descending respectively, work the same way. So here we're getting some results back here. My resolution isn't that great here. Let me scroll back and we can see. So we can choose which columns we want to see and how would you find out those columns? Well, you could just search through the resources virtual table to see what's possible there. Show all virtual machines by name in descending order is another query we'll do. Again, run the query, and you see that I have two virtual machines in my subscription. Now note that you can flip over to charts, and you can graph either a bar or a donut chart. Now, the result set is going to have to be compatible with that visualization. I have a good stored query that does give us good chart results. Speaking of which, if you have shared save queries or private queries that you've saved, we can get to them from open a query. I'm going to save this. This is showing all virtual machines, so I'm going to click Save. I'll call this all VMs ordered by name. And a private query is going to be available only to your user account. Shared queries is going to be available potentially across all users in your subscriptions, as you can see here. I'm going to make this a private query and click Save. If we go to Open Query, we can see private queries as well as any that have been shared with you from other users. And then we can select which saved query we want to run. I have one called VMs by OS Type. And as soon as I click that, notice that it fills in. And then when we run the query, we get the results. We'll now go to Charts and select the donut chart. And we've got a very simple graphic that's showing me, in this case, I have two total virtual machines. One of them is Linux. The other one is Windows. And as you may know, similar to how you can do this in Azure Monitor, you can pin these visualizations to the dashboard. It's going to choose the currently active one by default. Let me come back over to our Portal menu and select Dashboard. And there we have it. I had mentioned that the resource graph powers the search as well as the all resources pane. The all resources pane is really cool. It's going to show you everything by default across all subscriptions, all resource groups, all types and locations, but you can change and add filters in based on a number of different criteria, including, and this is important, taxonomic tags. The all resources view also allows you to do grouping by subscription, resource group, type, location. I like that a lot. Let me do a resource group grouping. And as you can see, I've got a Contoso resource group. And then if I scroll down, I've got a lab resource group. We also can see types, resource types that are normally suppressed from list views. Okay. Now you notice the export to CSV. You see that in the all resources view, but we also saw that in the resource graph explorer. Let's come back there and let me open another saved query I have that lists VMs with their network interface and their public IP. This is a pretty long, an example of an advanced query. And again, the idea is that if you're familiar with structured query language, you should be pretty familiar with KQL right out of the box. If you're a Pluralsight subscriber, take a look at our KQL course by Robert Kane. It's very, very good. So good that Microsoft themselves advertises it for people who want to learn KQL. Let me run this query. Again, it gives us rich results back. And notice that you can pin just the results to the dashboard, and you can always pull down the results of a query using CSV or comma-separated value format. To end, as promised, I wanted to give you the most important Azure Resource Graph learning references. One is a link to the docs page. I've created short URLs, timw.info forward slash reg1, timw.info forward slash reg1. For the simple query tutorial, it's timw.info forward slash reg2. And as logic would have it, the advanced queries help page in the Azure documentation I've mapped to timw.info forward slash reg3. 
want to thank you so much for your time. As always, I look forward to your comments, particularly if there are topics in Azure or even beyond Azure for that matter, that you'd like coverage on in my YouTube channel. My Twitter is Tech Trainer Tim, and I like to post on Azure and Microsoft Stack and Microsoft Learning on a daily basis. My Pluralsight courses, you can find those at timw.info forward slash ps, and my personal website is techtrainertim.com. Thanks again. Take good care.